going straight I'm straight as an arrow I'll pay the price and just the time Make myself useful, that's all. Why'd you have to start so early? Well, because I wake up early. When you've been three years in the nick, you get used to waking up early. On top of which, I don't sleep anyhow. Well, then he does. And you're going to wake him up with all that racket? Oh, he's here again, is he? Listen, he's supposed to be on the sofa. Where's he sleeping then? In Raymond's room. Oh, where's Raymond then? He's in my room. Well, where are you then? Well, I was down here and then I went back up. Where to? Raymond's room. <laughs> <laughs> You've lost me, I tell you. <laughs> oh, God, would you mind asking him not to park his articulated lorry outside this window? We get precious little sun in here as it is. We well, he only got in at two o'clock on his way back from Dover. Oh, yeah. Well, it's better he stops here than in some doss house on the North Cirque. And he gives me what they give him for bed and board. I know what he gives you. <laughs> Don't be crude, Dad. That's why I can't get to sleep one night. Well, nor can we with your bang, bang, bang first and in the morning. Makes up for your bang, bang, bang last thing at night. Don't, <laughs> don't be crude, Dave. Listen, I haven't got a job, so I'm channeling all my energies into fixing this house up proper, ain't I? Have you noticed the new pelmet at the top of the stairs? It's at the bottom of the stairs now, Dad. <laughs> what? It fell down. Oh, dear. That's only because it backs onto your bedroom wall. <laughs> Have you noticed the sink? The sink don't clog up no more. And Raymond's door that used to stick because of the damp weather last winter. That don't stick now. No, because I took it off. I shaved the bottom of it and I re it. It's the paper come. You're not listening to a word I'm saying, are you? Don't know why we need bookshelves in this house. No one reads here. I intend to. I've got nap all else to do, ain't I? Do you want some toast? Yeah, I wouldn't mind, yes. Maybe a boiled egg. No, we only got two eggs and I'm saving them for Lenny. You can have toast and marmite. Blimey, even in the nick I've got a boiled egg of a morning. <laughs> Well, can't you make do with one? Well, one egg's no good. You don't know you've had it. Oh, well, if I won't know I've had it, I won't have it then. <laughs> then I shall know I've had it, shan't I? Let him have it, then he'll definitely know he's had it. <laughs> Twice, at least this morning. <laughs> bang, bang. Morning, Raymond. What? My head hurts. Why? Bedroom door fell on it. <laughs> <laughs> How's the rest of you, then? What time is it? Quarter past. Sleep well? Is the paper come? No, not yet. What are you going to do today, then? Ingrid, you see my bicycle pump? Keep your voice down, then. He's trying to sleep. Going cycling, are you? That's nice. Going out in the country, eh? Whereabouts are you going, son? I had some pliers here yesterday. You know, have you noticed there's a sort of lack of conversational rapport in this house? Have you noticed that? I say one thing, you say another. I ask a question and nobody answers. Have you noticed that? Are either of you aware of that? Brown bread or white? You see what I mean? <laughs> you see, she's just proved it, isn't she, son, eh? Why are you making bookshelves? No one reads in this house. You've got to ask the simple question, brown or white? Just a minute, just a minute. I'm on, on the brink of a discovery here. That's the first straight question my son Raymond has asked me since I come out of the nick when he said, who are you? <laughs> Brown. What was that question again, son? No, it don't look too secure to me. Then that's not a question, that's a statement. So you've forgotten, now. It's all gone, isn't it? Listen, they are perfectly secure. Take my word for it. That's because I studied carpentry in the nick, didn't I? See what I mean? They're all right. Yeah. Well, I don't think they go in this room. Well, they will do when they're personalised. All you need is a bit of bric-a-brac or a family photograph. Look, that's all you need. Look, see? Just a little ornament like that. That's all. Now, perhaps a, a bowl of fat. <laughs> Get out of here. Go on. Didn't do nothing. Yes, you did. You weakened it. Go on. Get off, you long, long drink of water. Go on upstairs. Don't mutter. Don't mutter. Bound to weaken things if we go around banging things, ain't you? You shouldn't go around banging things. And that goes for you too, gobba. <laughs> Moment. 
Sick if I got a moment. Well, just nip down to Cochrane's, you know, get a few things in. Oh, that'll add a bit of excitement to my day, won't it? Nipping down to Cochrane's, that asthmatic old twit. <laughs> What is this? It's uh, tea bags, golden shred, Brussels sprouts, mandarin oranges, half dozen eggs, scar and oh, and I forgot. Um... <sighs> Brian Flakes, who's that? <laughs> no, they're Brian Flakes. Oh, I don't like Brian Flakes. Ah, but they got a special offer on this month: genuine folk art watering can kits. All oh, right, I'll eat them instead then. All <laughs> oh, right, give me something to do this afternoon, won't it? I can come home and erect a watering can kit. See your probation officer today, ain't ya? Tomorrow. Bird. What? Bird. I know it's hard. I know what you've been going through, but you knew it weren't going to be easy. Now, you mustn't let things get on top of you. I you know. never have. I know. I, d I didn't think it was going to be as hard as this, that's all. I want to make myself useful. You know, I have a job. But with my record... Now, well... that's not true. There's over a million unemployed in this country. There's boys what left Raymond School two years ago who don't know nothing else but a dull cue. Yeah, but it's this attitude of, of cynicism and mistrust I keep coming up against, which in turn makes me more cynical, and, and that's something I've always resisted. You know that very well, don't you? I mean, I went into the post office the other day just to get a, a post order for me pools. They got a, they got a Fortney Barrow there, chained to the wall. <laughs> I mean, still didn't write, but it was chained to the wall. <laughs> These days, that is the mood of the country. You've got to get used to it. It's been like that for a while. Of course, we did have a brief respite for the Jubilee celebrations, but that's behind us now. Yeah, well, it's getting me down. That's all I can say, girl. How's your sex drive, then? <laughs> what sort of a question is that for a daughter to ask her father? What a perfectly healthy one. I don't think like that should be swept under the carpet no more. Well, what's my sex drive got to do with anything? Well, it could have a great deal, because I think your lack of it is symptomatic of your general malaise. I mean, you was always a man with a man's appetite. Yeah, that reminds me. What happened to that bored egg? Dave, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Here you are, with Mum gone, out of prison, and you ain't so much as looked at a woman. You don't think I'll bring a woman into this house, do you, Ingrid? I must have... I've got some sort of decorum and decency, you know. I would not embarrass the other members of this household by, by consorting in this very house with a, with a woman of the opposite sex. <laughs> I don't see why you shouldn't. All the rest of us do. Not Raymond, surely. I mean, he hasn't got the energy, has he? <laughs> or a charm. Oh, you'd be surprised. Girls like Raymond. Oh, what do they like about him? His national health acne. <laughs> Take it from me that he's got no problems in that direction. It's you what I'm worried about. You see, I think you're going through your midlife crisis. Like what this article in Cosmopolitan said last week. The male menopause cause and effect. Now, listen, Ingrid, we will have none of that sort of talk in this house, please. You shock me at times, you do. You really do. I'm not being rude, Dad. That's medical. Well, medical things are rude, aren't they? <laughs> Way. Yes, I am. And I will not have any of this permissive, liberated talk in this house. I'll tell you what my midlife crisis is, shall I? Shall I spell it out for you? I am a 45-year-old ex-lag with no money, no prospects, and as of now, no wife. Now, for the sake of my family, I'm trying to go straight, which means at my age, with my qualifications, my future holds about as much excitement as a wet Sunday afternoon in Merthyr Tidville. <laughs> <laughs> why Merthyr Tidville? Why Merthyr Tidville? I'll tell you why, because they've got more pubs there than anywhere else in Britain, and they're all shut Sunday. <laughs> What? You take this. No, I've got the money for the groceries. No, 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 that's just for you to have something in your pocket, you know. Ingrid, I will not take a handout from my family, thank you very much. Well, you always took it from Mum. <laughs> I've got plenty of tips, you see. That's one of the perks of being a manicurist. Well, that and free nail varnish. Well, bring me a bottle of that, then. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ingrid, I'm, I'm not being ungracious. I just haven't come down to that yet. Do you know what I mean? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll put it underneath our Jubilee tea kettle, just in case you change your mind. All right, suit yourself. Dad? Yeah? You've been doing some of your own improvements to this kitchen door? Yes, I have, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I've fitted draft excluders. Yeah, I thought you'd done something. It's freezing in here. Eh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Fletcher. Got a stuff. Oh. Have a Hello, Danny. 
Never mind all the Italian bonhomie. Let's have a cup of tea and a kick out, shall we? Si. Morning, Puss. Eight, ten. Shut up, I'm counting. Well, Finish your milk round early, ain't you? Been giving the horse Benzedrine again, have you? <laughs> nah, guy, I ain't had horses before you went in. Ain't you? Must be a bit of a job pulling that cart round on your dog. <laughs> nah, that'll be dark. Oh, it's all electric now. Oh, an all electric horse. What will they think of next? <laughs> One the cup of tea. Hey, <laughs> one the cup of tea. <laughs> he used to talk broad cockney at school, you know, he did. <laughs> Help yourself, you sugar. I will, I will. Oh, blimey, not you as well. Look at this. <laughs> Afraid someone's going to steal your British Railways teaspoon, are you? What's hey? wrong with you? Got out of bed the wrong end, eh? No, I wish I hadn't got out of bed at all sometimes. I really do. Here, here. What? You're my age, ain't you? Thereabouts. I'm a 39. You lying git. You've got a son of 26. <laughs> In Sicily, we come to manhood early. Oh, yes, agreed, agreed. But you come from Stoke Newington, don't you? <laughs> Listen, I'm a busy man. Oh, really? What are you doing? Taking in washing? What? <laughs> what do you want to ask me? I want to show you something. Ready? Are you ready? See? Si. Ready? Here we go. Go. Santa Madre, que paia de tete, Dio me perdón. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I don't understand the language, but I certainly get the gist of it, yes. Now, I used to be exactly like that, right? Especially when I was in the nick. Now, this morning, this very morning, I went straight past her and right under the sporting section. Yeah, I was much more interested in Orient's crippling injury list. What do you say, me? I don't get it. No, I don't get it either. No, precisely. <laughs> but my point is, I'm not sure I still want it. You see, now that is very worrying for a man of my age, isn't it? I am sorry. Yeah. I think it's the stuff they used to put in the prison tea, you know. I think it's just beginning to work. <laughs> Mind if I sit here, love? Ta. Uh, Puss, do me a favour, would you? Don't tempt me. Oh, no. There's a lad. Come on, Fletcher, I've got to do that column all over again now. <laughs> Gratitude for you. Like a bit of Kit Kat? You sod. <laughs> Pardon? You heard. I was hoping I heard wrong. Well, you didn't. Oh, well, old Sally's. That's me finished. Off home then, Purse, to the little wife, eh? Or are you going round to that little number in Sycamore Crescent? What little number? You know who I'm talking about. The one whose husband's on the oil rig. Listen, I'm not your common old garden randy milkman, thank you. I'm not talking about in the garden, am I? <laughs> <laughs> or on the common, for that matter. I'm talking about round Sycamore Crescent. Yeah, well, I ain't that sort, neither. Ain't you? No, I ain't. Oh, dear. Must have got what I got. <laughs> I'm going around the betting shop. Do you want one on? Oh, I see. Here, do you want a bet on Fletch? Tell you what, I'll do Arctic Lady, four o'clock, ten No, 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 no. Gambling is the child of avarice and the father of sin. George Washington said that, you know. Or was it Eric Catchpole? <laughs> <laughs> Who's Eric Catchpole? Philosopher and wit. Used to play left half for Brentford. <laughs> he was the man who said, show me a milkman in high heels and I will show you a Dairy Queen. <laughs> Go Don't take any wooden yogurts. <laughs> Good that, eh? Dairy Queen, Milkman Isles, not him. Oh, never mind. You're a laughing soul of party, aren't you? No, I'm nobody. Like to rabbit, though, don't you? How old are you to talk to me like that? How old do I have to be to talk to you like that? I didn't ask you to sit here. I sat here to save you from yourself. I can look after myself, thanks very much. Here. What? Get some of that inside you. Reckon you need it? No, I don't. Why do you come here, then? For his Italian cuisine, or what? I just come here, don't I? Listen, if you're desperate enough to put your hand into Percy's purse in broad daylight, then you are in dire need of a cup of tea, so get it, done. not you? Another cup of tea, Danny. Eh, God, the last of the biggest spender. <laughs> <laughs> I can't pay for this tea. Didn't think you could. Sleeping rough, are you? What if I am? Run away, are you? What if I am? Not from round here. What if I'm not? Oh, go, come on. <laughs> Look, I'm not the law, I'm not the welfare, I ain't the vicar either. So? So just relax, girl, that's what I'm saying, relax. Look at you, taught as a fiddle string, ain't you? On drugs, are you? Uppers, is it? Bleeding, wish I was. Well, that's the point of contact, anyway. <laughs> Why, you've got some? No. Well, what's your game, then? You come over here, you sit down, I didn't ask. 
Why, you dirty old man. Want to buy me a bar of chocolate and get a quick touch-up? <laughs> You're a dirty little girl in more ways than one, you know. You don't know me. I know you need a bath. It's a sugar. Oh, thank you. Just sugar, I hope. I wouldn't put it past that probation officer to come round here and keep up the treatment, you know what I mean? Oh. <laughs> What's your name, then? Margaret Thatcher. Oh. <laughs> nice to meet you, Margaret. My name is Norman Stanley Fletcher, commonly known as Fletch. I was joking. Was you? Don't you know who Margaret Thatcher is? You thick or something? Who is she, then? Well, she's in the government, is she? One of that lot. Haven't you seen her on the telly with her hairdos? No, she is not one of the government, as a matter of fact. She is, in fact, the leader of Her Majesty's opposition, if you want to know. Oh, same thing, innit, MPs? Here. Thought you said you didn't know her. That was to stimulate political argument. Blimey. <laughs> you don't half talk funny. How old are you? 36. You look older. <laughs> Hey, good morning, Sarge. Hey, sit down. I bring you the best cup of tea you ever tasted in your whole life. Black coffee, please. <laughs> you are on the run, ain't you, eh? Don't worry, I'm not going to give you in, am I? It's just that I only live round the corner. Now, I've got two daughters who've got a wardrobe which is permanently obsolescent. In my opinion, you could do with a fresh change of clothing. And certainly a bath. I think that is an offer you're in no state to refuse, don't you? OK, then. Well, come on, if you're coming. I haven't finished my tea yet. <laughs> hey, Fletch. What? It didn't take you long, eh? <laughs> what? To get to your orgies back. <laughs> yeah, I thought. Go on. <laughs> Some soup here. Water weren't very hot. Well, the soup is. Get it down your neck. <laughs> Find your clothes to fit you, did you? Weren't my style. Well, they weren't bought for you, were they? What'd you say your name was? The Fletch, they call me. Mine's Penny. Good, good. Now, where are you from, Penny? Well, I used to live in Camberwell. It's all right there. Me and always lived there. That's where all my mates are. Then me mum and Arthur moved to Portsmouth. Arthur? Yeah, bloke she lives with. He's all right. Just he works in Portsmouth. There ain't nothing to do there. Handy for the Isle of Wight, isn't it? <laughs> I've just left. I was going to stay with this mate of mine, Terry. He's great, Terry. He's a bit mad, like. But he's all right. He don't give a monkeys about anything. You'd like him. I doubt it. One of these punks, is he? No, he's not. He hates punks. Oh, well, that's something we've got in common, then. <laughs> yeah, that's why they sent him away. He'd have three of them up behind Peckhamodian. Oh, <laughs> charming. Oh. So he's gone. What are your plans now, then? Well, I can't hang around the Camberwell. Cops know me there. I'm on probation. Oh, yeah. I was going to stay with this other friend of mine who lives around here, Pauline Soper. Do you know her? No. Huh? She may have moved. I don't know what I'll do next. Well, you look worn out. I suggest when you've eaten what you're going to eat, you better go and get some kip. What? Were you? Pardon? Don't you fancy me? It's all right. I don't mind. Now, listen. There seems to be some sort of attitude prevalent in this country which is to view everything I do in the worst possible light. I didn't ask you back here for that. <laughs> no, no, don't comment. Just cut that out. Shall I tell you why I asked you back here? Because I saw in you someone who was bound on the same course as what I was. How do you mean? You're on probation, are you? I'm on parole. Are you? Yeah. That surprised you, didn't it? What is more, on top of that, I've spent 11 years out of my life in the Nick. 
Now, having said that, I thought you might be interested in taking a bit of advice from an old lag such as myself. Now go and finish your soup. Don't like tomato. <laughs> <laughs> it's very discouraging trying to help people, you know. I think I'll leave it out after you. I just don't like tomato. Oh, well, I'll rush round to Fortnum's tomorrow then and get your crate of mock turtle. <laughs> oxtail. I quite like oxtail. Go on, get up and have some sleep. Go on. Use my room, second on the left. Thanks. Good, it isn't all. <laughs> no, Dad. I can't do this. Do what? I'm trying to put this racing car together on here. Raymond's racing car. Well, that's the only reason we get that cereal, because he's collecting the set. He'd be ever so cross. This morning, I didn't expect you to take it so literal. So quick. Now, come on, Ingrid. It's not like that. She's only 16. She's just in a spot of bother. That's all she needed a place. I just brought her back in. I'll, I'll give her a bath and a bed. I loaned her the facilities. That's all. I'm just trying to help somebody as I pass along. That's all. I've got nap all else to do, have I? Better than sitting here making plastic racing cars and watering can kits. Well, Oh, little waif and stray, little alley cat. Did anyone see you bring her in here? Only the woman at 27, as usual. Why? <laughs> what much you fool? She'll think the same as you, I suppose, if her mind's like yours. I don't give a rat's. You've got to be very careful in your position, though, Dad. What do you intend to do about her? Well, I'm hoping she'll go back to her mum, voluntary. I'd like to think I can make her see sense, don't I? Shouldn't you just hand her over to the authorities? No, no. Worst thing you could do. Betraying her trust, wouldn't it be? I mean, if you can't show someone trust, how are they going to learn it? Ah, oh, come on, Dad. It's 12 o'clock and you're still not dressed. <sighs> I'm not going anywhere. Why, well, Sadie? Is it? <laughs> well, it's a lovely sunny day. Why don't you go to the match? They'll lose. <laughs> no, I'm not having this, Dad. For a whole week now, you've sat around this house morose and depressed. It was me what lost my purse, not you. I lost something more fundamental. I lost my, my faith in human nature, that's what I lost. Which certainly will not be restored by, by watching Orient play Mansfield Town. <laughs> got to do something with your life, Dad. Why? Why should I? Everything I do goes wrong, always had and always will. Now, that's not true. You made this, didn't you? Oh, it's not easy putting one of these together. It's a lovely job you've done. I'm going to christen it now. I'm going to water the geraniums. <laughs> you had to water nine at once now, aren't you? Oh, was that the door? No, it was a window. <laughs> My name's Arthur Boyle. I'm, uh, uh, You're coming in. <coughs> oh, dear. Yeah, I'm, uh, Penny's dad. Well, not a dad, exactly, but, uh, next best thing, you know? Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. Arthur, she said, yeah. Uh, could I, uh, have a word with you in private, like? I suppose so, yeah. Come on in. You stay here. I believe this is yours. No, not mine. No, I never carry one of those. Try my daughter. <laughs> yeah, I've got the address from the driving licence. I expect there'll be some cash missing. Here. Let me know how much I'll let you have it back. Police nabbed her, did they? No, no, she found us. <laughs> Reverse charges, of course. <laughs> so I uh, drove up and fetched her. Oh, I see. Uh, listen, uh, I know what you did. 
<laughs> what did she say I did? Uh, oh, no, 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 she said you tried to help, so I just wanted to say thank you. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, if there was more people around like you, well, uh, who knows what, eh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I mean, she's a bit of a tear away, I'm afraid, but still, she didn't make no phone call thanks to you, so, uh... <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So it's down to her mum and me now, I suppose. Yeah. Is that two pounds short near enough? <laughs> uh, would you like a cup of tea? Yeah, or a glass of beer. Uh, no, no, uh, uh, best be off for uh, traffic and that, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Come on, then. Well, thanks. Hello. All right, girl? Thought better of it, did you? I'll be in the car, don't be too long. So it's back to Portsmouth, is it? Yeah, I suppose so. Well, oh, it's nice there. Healthy. Keep away from the sailors. I can look after myself. Yes, yes, so you said. Thanks for bringing English purse back, though. I can't help pinching things. When I see him, I just take him. First thing I've ever given back. Oh, well, that's a start, isn't it, eh? <laughs> no harm done. You took it, you returned it. Just think of it like a, like a library book. I'll pinch them as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could do with a few of them to put my shelves over the sideboard. <laughs> well, they're under the sideboard at the moment. <laughs> well, we better get off then. Go on. Yeah. Oh, thanks for use of your bed. Nice, I liked it. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. See you then. Yeah, here. Yeah. You're going to give your Uncle Norman a kiss then? You're too soft. That's your trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Ta <-ra>, then. <laughs> you didn't give her a bath. Now, 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 I've told you. Well, if that kiss was anything to go by, you must have given her more on a cheese sandwich while I was out. Don't be crude, Ingrid. Good job you didn't put that pelmet back up. It'd be down again by now. <laughs> Don't be crude, I said. Not only crude, but wildly inaccurate. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What proof you got? None. I'm just going by the gleam in your eye, that's all. There's nothing much the matter with your sex drive. Sex drive? Nothing. I just had my faith restored in human nature, and I, eh? <coughs> Yeah, I think I will go to the match after all. With the luck the way it is, they might just scrape a point, right? <laughs> this bucks you up, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, it has, yeah. Yes, it's a nice feeling. Missionaries must feel a bit like that, you know? I mean, uh, it can't be all beer and skittles, can it, out in the jungle there? <laughs> With all the heat and the titsy flies, you know what I mean? <laughs> But well, then suddenly, into the clearing walk, walk this, this group of young head hunters and they, and they throw down their spears and they say, we want to learn the catechism. <laughs> Makes it all worthwhile. Yeah. Then they eat him. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put on a nice clean shirt then I'm going to have a bath. No, I won't. I'll have a bath first, then I'll put on a nice clean shirt. <laughs> then I'm going to take you all out for a celebration, right? Yeah, do you good. Yeah, I'm going to take you and young Gobba and, and Raymond and whoever he's not going to bath with all down the white art, right? What are you going to use for money? Ah, uh, I thought of that. I'm going to take advantage of that handout you offered me earlier on. All right? <laughs> Where'd you put it? It's under the tea caddy. All right. <laughs> Naffy now. Oh. <laughs> She's pinched the bleeding fibre. <laughs> Right and done time.